Hi, welcome. In this video, I'm going to tell you to make a city, destroy a city, make the UFO that destroys the city, make the beam that destroys the building, makes the particles that make it look cool, and then set up the scene so everything looks even prettier. On the minutes. left, you can see I have a bunch of low-poly buildings. I'm going to set the origin of these buildings to the very bottom so I can distribute them on this plane that I have here. I got these builders on CG Trader for $20. I really recommend you buying models instead of building them yourself unless you're a model builder. And then by all means, please make your own buildings. <laughs> in the background here, I'm just doing the same thing where I'm taking the origin and then putting them at the bottom. I'm going to put all of these buildings into one collection and then I'm going to scatter them. You do that by going to the render and then object and then not object. It's actually um, collection and then put that collection down. Turn the number down and then turn the scale down to one so they're the same scale as your buildings here. Um, they're actually a little bit smaller and they're facing the wrong way. So if you turn on rotation and then go to, I think it's object Y, no global Y, then all of your buildings should be going the right way. If not, rotate them as necessary and then change the origin of the add a little bit more. And I think that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna add a couple more buildings because I can kind of see some of the same ones being repeated and you just wanna have enough buildings so you don't really see any repeated. Um, and if you look at your plane and then go to front view, you can see if any of them are sticking out too far or too low. When you're adding a UV shear for the UFO, make sure they're not in the buildings collection because you don't want them to be scattered. Then do scale shift Z to scale it on only the X and Y axes and then grab some of your top vertices and then pull them up with E to extrude. Um, this is going to be a simple way to make the shape that you want if you add a subdivision surface modifier and then change up the type of faces that are going down or scaling them down you can get kind of a nice ufo shape i'm going to do that for the bottom as well um, just push them in and see if it's to your liking i don't like them pushing in as much but i'm going to push them down and then that's where i'm going to have that little um like explosion UFO type thing that you would maybe see on a UFO. Who knows? Because UFOs don't actually exist. And I think that's the end of this modeling. I just added a little bit of uh, edge loops to make it a little sharper here. Uh, maybe drag them up. And that's a pretty solid UFO. Next, we're going to do the UFO beam. You're going to dra gra grab a cylinder, and then you're going to go into the material panel. Um, add a new material, and then get a layer weight and a color ramp. This basically just shows where the edges of the object are. And if you do um, shift control with uh, Node Wrangler, you can kind of see it real time. Just shift the color ramp in and then add a little bit of subdivision so it gets a little bit higher quality. Uh, get an emission and then get a mix shader. And if you connect those with the factor being the layer weight, you can get a different color on the, only the sides of the beam. Shift that up because it's gonna be producing a lot of light and this is gonna radiate through all of our scene. Next, add a displacement modifier. Um, what this is gonna do is it's gonna displace with a generative texture. And I'm gonna use the cloud texture if you go into the texture panel. Um, you can mess with the settings here and then I think that looks pretty good. You can change it, um, make sure that your shift A, I didn't show it in this tutorial, but if you shift A, you might get the desired effect. Now we're gonna go on to self fracture. Um, you're gonna add to a subdivision with two just to give it a little bit more geometry and add a collision physics property to the ground. Next what you're gonna do is go to properties and then get the self fracture add-on then go to edit search and then self fracture and leave a lot of these settings alone but i'm going to turn recursion to two and then up the particles to 200. this is actually a really bad self fracture that i got it has a lot of these white blocks just delete those and then move the objects into their own collection uh, after getting rid of all the bad ones uh, you're seeing that I can go to the top of my objects and then selecting all of them, clicking M, and then putting them in their own self fracture add on. Place the building where you want the building to be in your scene, and since we haven't set up a camera, it doesn't really need to be anywhere specific. If you get the beam and then duplicate it and then turn on uh, proportional editing with a random scale, you can get a pretty cool stylized explosion. Um, this is by no means like realistic, but it also is a UFO. Set my focal length to 32 and then set up the scene however I want it. Try thinking of where a camera would actually be, like if a person was standing on the rooftop or something. Next I'm going to add an HDRI. I blurred this because there was some private information that's under NDA and I don't want you seeing that. Unless you've thumbnailed everything, you're probably going to be shifting the scene a lot. Um, I'm going to change the beam, like kind of where it's going, and I see that my UFO is not actually in the scene, so I'm going to drag that downwards. And uh, just finding a nice place for the UFO so you can see everything. 
Um, next, I'm going to add some ground planes to give a little bit of fake depth. I'm going to move them upwards in the scene, and now you can see a little bit more building, so it doesn't look as plain. Uh, I'm going to change the UFO to have a metallic texture, and uh, I really like the glow that you get off of it, so I'm going to I'm going to kind of keep it like that. And now to add the particle system, I'm going to be using a sphere for this, and um, I set it to hair here, but you really want it as an emitter. Um, you're going to add a cone and then turn that to three subdivisions because that's a really, really small, like, not affecting of your performance uh, type object. Um, I'm seeing that I'm not really getting the shading I want, so I actually did add a subdivision, so it's more like a rock. Now go to your particle settings and then turn it to emitter and then an object, and the object is going to be that cone that we just made. Add some scale randomness and then you're going to, actually I didn't click on the right cone, so, but that's the right cone there. Um, add the rotation just so they look a little bit different and then add some Boolean drag to the faces. Um, this is just going to make them kind of go everywhere instead of like a uniform shape. Um, now I'm just testing out by clicking space how the particles are moving and when you like something bake it. Once it's done baking you're going to instance all of these particles and that's just going to make the geometry real and it's going to help kind of set the frame. We don't need it to be a simulation when we're actually working with it because this is only going to be a picture. And now I can actually move around this particle object and that's going to be a lot easier and look that's covering up a lot of the cell fracture I'm really liking that next I'm going to add some focal length and turn my f-stop down as low as I need it just to get that background and blur and then in the foreground and blur I'm gonna add another UFO to make a V shape with my composition this helps drag the eye into the focal point which is going to be the explosion adding some of the particles in the background just to get a little bit of glow and now we're gonna add some motion blur um, we can fake motion blur by putting some keyframes uh, at the end and making them go really fast uh, like they're going downwards and then if you check motion blur it'll give the illusion of motion as you can see in this render that I just rendered out. Since I'm making this for YouTube I checked it pretty small so I could see if the thumbnail was working but I realized that the UFO didn't have as much scratch as I wanted so I got a musgrave and then I plugged it into the noise with a color ramp and I can kind of shift that in to get whatever desired look. I don't want it to be completely transparent and I also want there to be a little bit of scratches. The entire thing is blowing up and I also wanted to do something a little bit closer and maybe with a nice focal length you get some of these um, out of focus explosion marks and um, the closer they get to the camera the more in blur they're going to be so just see what looks nice for your scene. We've kind of gotten to the end of this tutorial. This was a 30 minute um, project that I squished down to 7 minutes and 30 seconds. If you like this type of workflow rather than just the full time lapse, please consider giving this a like and comment. I work really hard on these and it's just really awesome that there are so many people who have been liking and supporting my videos. I still really struggle with outros so I guess this is it. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. See ya.